Hello and welcome to the Bielsa Ball podcast, the pre-match show with me, Tommy Rocket. And today I welcome on a very special guest, Liverpool fan, host of the Pass and Move Liverpool podcast, and probably most famous as the guitarist in Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Nasher. Welcome to the show. Nice to be here, Tommy. Nice to see you again. Up here. Hands across the Irish Sea and all that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So how have you been keeping over the whole, whole lockdown there? Last oh, 12 months or so. I've had, I've, had a, I've had a great lockdown of loads of different things going on and I've moved back to Liverpool so being there has been uh, it was interesting being able to rediscover um, this amazing city whilst there was nobody else on the street. You know, it's Absolutely. something it's something that I think we all take for granted wherever we live that we're too busy either looking at the floor or looking at the phone or trying to avoid somebody who's looking at the floor and looking at the phone <laughs> to actually be able to look around and look up and uh, say walking around the architecture of Liverpool. You know, people people think, um, you know, especially from the south of England, think the north of England's all flat caps and whippets. And you think, like, well, you know what we've got? Outside of, outside of London, we've probably got our, the best architecture in the country. You know, it's, we, we were the yeah, New yeah. York at one time. You know, people that was what people were calling the New York of England. And uh, I'm just loving it, mate. I couldn't be happy. I'd make you... St- I'd, I said, just before we started there, there's so many people being having a... T- it's like, I'm so happy. I'd make you sick. Yeah, but... Yeah, the- yeah. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Well, what what a great time to move back to Liverpool as well. So you finally ended the the tour de year drought of of a top flight championship. Um, how did you how did you enjoy that? What how did you experience it? Because I know Le- Leeds won the league last year and Liverpool won the league last year, and it's something that I'm sure you envisaged what it was going to be like when the last final whistle went and your team finally won the league. Like, like myself, Leeds getting promoted, and it just it and it didn't turn out that way. How did, yeah. how did you enjoy Liverpool winning the league? Where, well, where? I, I'm kind of I, I'm kind of quite philosophical about you know how I follow Liverpool because really I've seen them win everything in my lifetime. I've been there when they've won these big trophies. I, like I, I was going to the match when I was a kid when winning the league was something that happened like every other year. So <laughs> from my point of view. It, I don't think the football club owe me anything for my, you know, for my support that I've given them over the years. But it was more for for people like me. Sean, he, he's uh, he's twenty nine, and he'd never seen us win the league. So it, for him, it was great. But I'll, as a Leeds fan, mate, I've got to put this back back to you because you'd be give you'd be able to give me the perfect response. As the team who won the Premier League as well, he said, um, my my <laughs> my son said to me. I want us to win the Prem. I'm not bothered about the Champions League. He said, I just want us to win the Prem so we can so we've won it. He said, like all these other all these like uh, Arsenal his mates of his who are Arsenal fans and Chelsea fans, they've all won it. All I've had is Istanbul. Oh, and really, oh poor you. All you've had is Istanbul. <laughs> yeah. You know, arguably one of the greatest greatest bits of sport and drama. You oh, know, yeah, outside of the fact one. that it was being it's your club, but you know, but it, it's um, it was kind of strange the way the season ended as well, and it was it was over it was over in February, wasn't it? it, it I mean, yeah, I think really this was, season yeah. this season's kind of been strange because of the injuries we've had, but I still think come next season with the with the t- with the fans in the ground. It's between us and Man City again. I don't think the rest of them are anywhere near it. And I think we've had some yeah, fluky yeah. results. This means we've had some bad decisions go against us. You know, we're not alone in that. Um, but to be honest, watching the football this season, uh, the pubs were open. I've seen the first game of the season against Leeds, uh, which was which was a you know fantastic game. Yeah, but yeah. without supporters, it's it without spectators, it's not a spectacle. And people say, you know, why are Liverpool playing so badly and why can't they win at home? It's because when we play at home, we play with 12 men and we're t- we've been reduced to 11. And that 12th <laughs> man makes a massive difference. You know, that game against Real Madrid the other night, with 56,000 people in that ground, I'd give us more than a chance. In an empty ground, 11 against 11. It's not the same thing, and I find it. I found it really hard. I mean, and and I don't say this again because we're not in the running. I haven't watched a single episode of Matter of the Day this season. Not even, and and the other thing is the the VAR. 
VAR has just ruined the game. It's just yeah. killed. And, right. and the, you know, they're kind of getting away with it because the disappointment we, we all feel when we see that thing going up or the referee reaching to his ear is, is this season has been a, a, a basically a solitary experience because we've all been watching it on the telly. Whereas yeah. when you combine up with 30, 40, 50,000 people, oh, who can't celebrate because they're waiting for this thing to go? for it to go on and then you, yeah, because yeah. of this thing you've got linesmen who won't put a flag up no we'll let it play so it's just nonsense it's to quote Roy Keane nonsense it is <laughs> and, and it's, it's killing football I think my mate sums yeah. it up best he said um, the garnish is eating the steak you know football football existed for, for over 100 years without television and uh, yeah. and was doing well and it, it football doesn't exist for television. Television exists yeah, yeah. to broadcast football, and yeah, yeah. I think there's something lost from it. And it's like you know, for, yeah. you know, for the same same position yourself with Leeds being back in the big time again, playing great footy, got a nutcase manager, got you know, it's just, there's a lot of things that are all all the stars are in the right place, and you can't go and see them. And and again, yeah, I'd yeah. say the same thing affects. Uh, leads to, to have a packed Ellen Rhodes with the team back in the top flight it makes oh, a massive electric. difference to our yeah it makes a massive difference to how the team play and 100%. it's uh, you know bring them back we'll we'll have a full strength squad again next season yeah I I, I think uh, good luck to anyone who fancies it because I think they're all they're all miles behind it I really do you think you're looking at West Ham being in in the top four, I know, like they're playing all right, and they've had a few games. But you look at the losses that in the Premier League this season. You know, I think we've lost nine games or something ridiculous, or maybe even more. And everyone's lost loads of games, and it's it really goes to show that uh, it is the fans make a massive difference to the game. And you yeah. know, in the history of Liverpool Football Club, we've never lost that many games, and Joe, in that history. We've been there have been times when we've been absolute garbage, you know what I mean? You know, the, yeah, people yeah. forget that Liverpool existed, you know, for a very, very long time before uh, before Bill Shankly turned up. But bring on the fans, get the fans back in the ground, and then it'll be something worth watching. Yeah, big time. I have to say, of all the things that I miss uh, since lockdown kicked in, having that trip over to Ellen Road once every month, once every couple of months is the one thing that I miss the most, you know, when you're, we, th- we've missed so many experiences as fans. I know you were saying that, yeah, you know, you won everything in your lifetime and you were at, you were at the majority of the time. And it was almost expected that you've done it, but I feel the same. Like I, I'm, I'm 37. So the last time Leeds even won a trophy, I was eight, you know, so I've gone through my whole life without experiencing Leeds even lifting a cup. And we had it, the, the, the match that Leeds got the trophy in, which was the, the last home game of the season against Charlton. We had a book from myself, my dad, and, our, and my little boy. He was only eight to go over and experience it. And uh, you know, e- even so far this season, we probably would have got over at least six, seven times by now. And yeah. it's just, yeah, it, the, 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 the fan, the fan aspect of it is definitely. It, it's not only affecting the fans because the fans are they're, they're so. I would say disappointed. Are kind of raging that the, this is all happening and they can't be there. And the, yeah. the players at the same time. You've got players playing for, for both clubs at the moment. Well, every club who's not experienced what it's like to play in front of a packed out home stadium. You know, yeah. we've got the likes of Rafinha, who's had an unbelievable uh, four season, Rodrigo. And they're playing for Leeds and they're experienced in the Premier League, but they haven't fully experienced the Premier League until you've run out into your home ground, Ellen Road or Anfield, and heard the roar as you came out yeah. the tunnel, you know? So they'll have yeah. played a whole season without hearing that. And I just think. Yeah, you're dead right. The, the the fans not being at the stadium is is having a major impact. Even the start of the season, you look at some of the score lines, they were yeah. mental. Yeah. And it, 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 I, I spoke to a chap and he, he put it down to the players have no pressure on them from the fans. You don't yeah. hear that big, that big soya, oh, when someone's closing <laughs> you in or, yeah. or, when, or whatever it is. So there was mistakes getting made. Look, the f- first match of the season, 4-3, Leeds, Liverpool. Now, saying that, Le- Leeds and Liverpool are, are no strangers to to mad score lines. We've had a few mad score lines down the years. Yeah. I think the first year the first year we came up in ninety one, there was a five four. Uh, you are winning four 0 we came out the four all and Liverpool got a got a winner or something along the lines of that. 
Um, there was the famous Mark Viduga 4-3, where Viduga got oh. all four. Um, there was a couple of others. I wrote them down earlier. I was looking at them. Oh, the Charity Shield as well in 92. Yeah. That, was a, that was another mental game. Uh, Cantona got a hat-trick for us. And then he pissed off the other crowd. But that's another <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah, dirty attic. Dirty yeah. attic, yeah. So, yeah. He's not allowed. To, his name is banned in my house. Him and a few others. But um, how, do, how do you think Monday night's game is going to go? Obviously, Liverpool are still missing some of their most uh, influential players from Virgil van Dijk. Henderson's still out injured. Um, looking a little bit soft through the middle at times. Um, especially in defence how do you think you'll handle the high press from Leeds second time round I don't know it's, it, mate, it's, it, you couldn't put a bet on it could you you, you couldn't put you couldn't predict how any of these games are going to go because uh, I mean with, with with us losing to Madrid and going out of the Champions League then it's you know that seemed to be and, and I thought on the I thought on both legs I thought we played all right Um Played pretty good in the second leg, but yeah. just didn't get that little bit of luck. Sometimes you know, you, you know, the, the shot hits someone and goes somewhere where it shouldn't. And um, I think, yeah. I, I think that we'll look. We gotta go. We gotta be in the top four, haven't we? We have gotta be in the top four. Uh, yeah. Finishing yeah. fifth with with no t- disrespect to any other team who wants to play, we would happily play in the Europa League. The Europa League's just nonsense. It's not worth playing. Uh, yeah, yeah. To win it, you've got to you've got to play another half season to win it, um, <laughs> and it, it it just it just creates chaos with your home fixtures, doesn't it? You're playing you're playing catch up all the time, and and you, all your games are on a sun. You know you're getting loads of games on a Sunday, and you know UEFA as soon as they made that uh, a league situation like the Champions League, it completely devalued the competition. You know. Yeah, I'd, I I'd still go back to having the champ, you know, the Champions League. You know, the, the, it should be a knockout. Let's have a knockout. Yeah, you when you look at you look at these Champions League fixtures by uh, by three or four games in it, you can tell who's through. You could, you know, it, it, there's very, you know, it, it very rarely goes to the last game. Or well, apart from Liverpool, we never we never seem to go through comfortably. There's always <laughs> something on it. But yeah, yeah. so uh, going back to your question, I'm expecting something to bounce back. So I mean, the defeat from Madrid will either give them a bit of impetus. You know, we got the seven game, seven games. I think we have got left. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good few points to play for, and and really the way we've been playing, we're just. I, th- I don't know what the answer is. It's all this possession, uh, more shots. I would say instead of trying to walk the ball into the net. And I'm better finishing. And and I've got to say it, as much as he's 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 been scoring and he's our leading scorer, Salah is just so profligate in front of goal. He's you know, if he if he scores the che- if if he finished like Aguero, he'd be not he'd be notching up like Dixie Dean figures, you know, it'd be <laughs> insane. Speaking of Salah, right? For me, from an outside perspective, Salah almost to me looks like a player that doesn't want to be there anymore. Now it could be it could, it could be just a poor run of form or whatever, and I've heard a few rumours, and he he done some interview with with a, with a Spanish newspaper about uh, saying he'd never rule out a, a move to Real Madrid or something along the lines of that. Um, there's rumours coming out that there's trouble now. That always happens in the camp. That always happens when you hit a bit of a poor run. But what do you think of the whole Salah situation? Do you think that that there, there is a little bit of turmoil behind the scenes? Um, if there is, and he does one away. Who's got the money? Who's got the money that Liverpool has won for him? You've got to be saying he's got to be worth 120, 130, 140 million on his stats alone. Yeah. Real, Real Madrid will afford it. They, they seem to always pull they, the money out. No they're, matter, against, no matter what. they're potless. They're absolutely, they're really struggling. They're, they're talking about building a new ground. So, you know, and yeah, they've been bailed out once before when they're, when the council bought their training ground for millions and say you know four times over what what it should have been worth and saved them, but there's only a, there's only Paris Saint Germain, Barcelona can't afford them. They've got no money, but you know if they want to go, mate, we've lost we've lost them before. For me, we've had some unbelievable strikers, strikers who are better than them. Luis Suarez was a better player than him, better finisher than him. 
And yeah. uh, and he was the best striker in the world when he played for us. And what happened when he left? He wasn't the best striker in the world anymore. If you want to go and play in a two-horse race in Spain for Real Madrid or Barcelona, be my guest. We, you know, that, I always remember when Salah came to us, my mates said, I'm really, really enjoying watching him. And nice to know we got the best striker in the world again. They all leave Torres, Suarez, Ian Rush, Michael Owen. Where did he go? None of them do what they do at Liverpool. <laughs> Rush went to Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> no, so did Robbie, so did Robbie Fowler as well. Robbie went yeah, to Leeds yeah, yeah. as well, didn't he? But it, yeah, he did, it, actually, know, there, yeah. <laughs> there is that thing. If he wants to go, let him go. I don't want someone who... You know, I'd, I'd see... Uh, there's a few players out there, and you're, you're looking at the... You know, where's Harry Kane going to go? Who's got, the, who's got the money for him? You know, yeah. Haaland... If we sell Salah for the we've got to seem to have a policy within FSG that it, you don't. They will spend it if the money's coming in, but I don't think they like uh, overstretching their expo, uh, exposure. If if you like, yeah. and if if we do sell him and, and he goes for over hundred million, which he will, then I, personally I'd go in for uh, what you call it, Son. Ireland. Son from, 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 from yeah, because he he looks like a Liverpool. He looks like a Klopp kind of player, and I think it playing in a in a front three would suit him. Whereas at Spurs, he's kind of playing off Harry Kane and and or mm. playing to Harry Kane. Whereas yeah. it, but you know we've had these players. If we could lose one of those three, as long as it's not for me, no. For me, it was just uh, an out. He is not having the greatest of season, but the team aren't. But for me, it is he's the best footballer in the squad by a country mile. You know, you yeah. see see some of the, the disgusting passes he gets sent, and it's all, you automatically know. It's all right, Bobby's Bobby's got it because his first touch is is sublime, and uh, yeah. I don't care if Salah goes, nice one, Mo. You've been boss. You, you've, you've got you've had those out of our seat. And yeah, uh, yeah. but where where's he gonna go? That's the thing, isn't it? Where'd you go? And yeah, who's, who's well, I suppose gonna, gonna... all the speculation is, is knocking around at the moment, but I don't think anybody really understands what the financial situations are with most yeah. of these clubs. So, like people people think your Real Madrid's and your Barcelona's and everyone else are are invincible almost. But like you said, there is financial problems with most clubs, and especially the big ones, because their wage bills are so high and they're not getting the, the revenue through the through the door that they yeah. should or normally would get. So the next question is, right, we'll always have a, a Leeds, a, a bias Leeds kind of perspective on things. But as a Liverpool fan, um, what are you expecting from Leeds on Monday? <laughs> Obviously, it's it's, uh, well, uh, it's, yeah. it's going how... And what, what, and what players... Uh, have impressed you for Leeds so far this season? To be honest, mate, I, I, the, the only th- the only thing I've watched of Leeds is uh, I've been brushing up my Spanish lessons by watching uh, Bielsa's post match <laughs> post match conferences on um, <laughs> on the uh, on the BBC website, and I haven't watched a lot. The only time I've I've, I've watched Leeds is uh, I'll dip in and out of watching it, but it's, as I say, I don't, from what I've seen from Leeds' results, they're kind of, they've kind of been a bit like husband that it's a bit hot and cold. They can, yeah. you know, they can have they can play have some fantastic games and pull out some great results, and then for you know two games later they'll stink, and they'll they'll, they'll end up getting beat. And uh, I, I just think that that it tends to take in terms of in terms of having Leeds back in the in the Premier League. Leeds are a big club. Uh, with a big support, and you know, when you look at the like with the likes of club, it's a bad example. Like clubs like Bournemouth, say, I'd rather have Leeds in in the Premier League than Bournemouth, and yeah, and it's yeah. it's and big teams, and even even to a degree like the likes of Sheffield United as well. You know, it was good to see them, and I don't know whether this is me looking at looking at it through uh, rose tinted glasses at the past, but you know. Yeah, mm. Sheffield United. I had Sheffield United in Subutio, you, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. So that was it. So the, you you have an, a, a kinship with all of these teams, and some of them have gone, and you know the likes of Coventry and that, and Leeds for a bit. You know, Leeds Leeds disappeared. Mm-hmm. Didn't Not, they? Nottingham Forest, Sheffield Wednesday, yeah. those kind of clubs. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's a few of them that have gone, 
So, but I, I think with regards, I think Bielsa is great. I think he's a nutcase sitting on the bucket. What an absolute, like, what an absolute psycho. Like, he's like a, he's like a, a, a Sunday league manager. <laughs> uh, I, I just I, I like the fact as well what what from what I've heard you know from listening to stuff on the radio that this idea of a rolling having a rolling contract isn't it he hasn't committed to, he hasn't committed to next season but yeah. it seems to be that like none of the Leeds fans don't seem to think that are not thinking that he's going to go somewhere else I think they're all convinced that he's going to stay yeah. And, yeah. Um, it, that, that's you know that's quite rare in the modern age because they all they're, they're all three bad games away from getting the ball out, aren't they? So they all want to yeah. have a nice you know two year, three year contract minimum, so that when they eventually do get binned, which they will eventually do as good as they are, that you're going to get a nice, nice couple of years wages out of it. You know, yeah, I, yeah. Think Mourinho, I think Mourinho's may have been paid about 120 million. In severances you know, alone, of, outside of his wages, I, I think I think the biggest difference with Bielsa to the majority of other managers, and it's going to sound ridiculous and it's going to sound so un twenty twenty one esque, is that Bielsa is not in it for the money. Bielsa is in it because he loves football. Yeah. He's in there because he's in there because he knows he's done a good job. And what he likes to do, he likes to start here with a club. That's why Leeds were the perfect club for him. That's why he's yeah. never been at Real Madrid, at Barcelona, or Manchester United. He likes to start here with the club and puts his own stamp on a bunch of players that have no egos. There's no egos in his dressing room. If there is, he, he's gotten rid. He's got rid of Pondis Johnson and a couple of other decent players. And he builds it and builds it and builds it. And it takes time for him to build it. The reason he only signs the one-year contract is because at the end of each year, he says, right, I've taken your club from here to here. Now, in order to take it to here, here's what I need. You either right. give it to me, or I don't sign the contract. No, he's not holding them to ransom. It's not. It's not that kind no, of so scenario. That's a negotiation. It's a negotiation. Yeah. No, of course it is. Whereas, whereas, is if he if he signs a three year contract and after the second year they say, listen, we've nothing in the bank. He's going to go. I'm out here because I can't take you guys further because we don't have what's 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 necessary to do so. So yeah. he is he's he is he is a bit of a I'd say he's a tactical genius because some of the things he does, you go. I would never have thought of that. I know you always kind of have a bit of a coach in mind, if like coach football and stuff like that, as does my dad. And sometimes the two of us are left there scratching our heads, going, Jesus, yeah, you pulled that one out of the bag. So he is he is definitely a, a tactical genius and he's absolutely adored and leads. Like not many players in their in their lifetime, which while whilst they're alive, have murals of them all over the yeah. city. And and Bielsa does. That's how how much he's uh, he's regarded? Uh, well, I think I think from like I think from the fans' point of view, as as much as they all want, they all are very impatient. Well, not all, yeah, well. a vast majority are very impatient, and they all want to run before they can walk. I think with Leeds being back in the Prem, you have got to be looking at well, you know what? You have got to consolidate here. Got to become a Premier League team for two yeah. years, this year, next year, and then the year after that. Then start looking at chip, maybe getting into the getting into the, the Champions League spots, maybe trying to get a League Cup or something. But everybody wants instant instant success, and that's it. It's it's a fantasy. It doesn't work. And you know, and I and I see it with with the Evertonians and Ancelotti. Now it's like you know, they, I think they've. I was looking the other day. They've spent in the last three seasons, Everton spent a quarter of a billion on players. Wow. And it's... Ancelotti is in. And if the if they were in the ground now, they'd be burning them because the only thing they they had going for them this season is that they, they that we were like as pretty as much as shit as they were, and they won a derby, and which for the first time in twenty odd years, and um, but they got no patience, and it's and it's made worse by the fact that them fucking red shies over there have, have just won the league, and and. I think maybe a derby win might temper their enthusiasm a little bit, but football fans have got no patience, especially them. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think with the, I think it's a different thing for Leeds because you, you haven't got a mate, a big city rival. You know, it, it, you haven't got another team in the city that you'd have that kind of thing. Of course, you've got the rivals and that, but your rivals are not traditionally. Well, who's who's your rivals now? In in there isn't any, is there? In your Sheffield well, United, I suppose. 
Well, the only Yorkshire so, Derby is Sheffield United, but the, the, the Man United obviously would be our, our rival rivals uh, yeah. throughout. But yeah, if you're talking about rivals in, in, in Yorkshire, Huddersfield and Bradford would be the two closest, but yeah. we're, not, we're, not in any, we're not in any danger of playing order that was any time soon, <laughs> unless we get them in the cup. But um, how would, it's gonna, I'm gonna, gonna go back a little bit, uh, Nashar. Uh, how would it, obviously, in Liverpool, two city club, um, you're either going to be blue or you're going to be red. How did you end up being a red, or is it just something that you were like uh, yourself? You were, you were just, you were born, you were born a fan. <laughs> my dad, my dad was a, um, was a, was a Liverpool fan, pre Shankly, and and it, there's a, there's a thing amongst, well, he's he's no longer with us, but guys of his age now give it to Evertonians because they grew up supporting the shite club. They, and Everton, Everton were a top team. And so yeah. when Shankly came, it, it changed. And, and we've, we've won cups since then. And they've had a couple. But, you know, last 20 odd years, uh, was, it, was it 95? All right, yeah. Paul, yeah. FA Cup. Yeah, FA Cup was the, was the last time they, they won a trophy. And... It, it say that it, it, they are better than Twisted, but if they'd have done well this season, for every Bisted and Twisted, Bisted and Twisted, Twisted, <laughs> Bisted and Twisted Evertonian, for every one that I know, there's a good one, and and I, I, I th- I'd like to see them do well, like like it was back in the eighties, you know, both teams were like, were like were playing really well. But going back yeah. to the, sorry, your question, yeah, I was a Liverpool fan. I, I, I used to go in the Anfield road ends with my dad. My dad's days of standing on the cop. He said it was just it's just bedlam in it. It was bedlam back then. Yeah, yeah. So the only time I actually ever stood on the cop, in fact, the only time with, uh, was with my dad, because uh, I used to go on the used to say go on the opposite ends of the ground. The only game I ever stood on the cop for was uh, Saint Etienne, and and it was like yeah. you know. If you're going to pick one game to go on the cop, what a game to to, to pick! And, right. and that was because there was thousands of Saint Etienne supporters in the Annie Road, and then you couldn't get in. Nah, but, um, really. No, I, 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 the Alpha had the season ticket, and and you, you'd have to you'd have to be a red. You'd have to be a red. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's know, quite funny. You know choice. <laughs> I've got a, uh, I've, my my I've got a, uh, a grandson, who's who's father is a Newcastle fan and um, when he was born I was singing Liverpool songs to him when he was in my arms and and the, the, and James his dad was originally from Liverpool so he's a Liverpool fan and he said I'm just consigned to the fact that he's going to be a Liverpool fan and he said I don't think I could I could inflict on him what Newcastle have inflicted on me over the years you know it's um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to talk about trophies, God, it, 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 I think I think they've only won one in my lifetime, let alone is, you know. So it, yeah, it's, uh, Jesus. But as I say, the, the foot, if we never win anything ever again, and if the, if the foot, if we play dog shit football from now until they put me in the box, I've seen it all. I've seen I've, I've seen championships won at home, and and I was there when Zalgalis scored at at, uh, at Wembley. When I was a kid, you know, in '77, it was like you can't replace that. And of, and of course, then as well, the, the game has completely changed, and the, the football isn't what it used to be. And it, it's that's the, the the thing that really sticks with me when I see old clips now is you look at, you look at the crowds, and the crowds was full of kids. There was kids who could go to the match. And we're talking about like they're saying your lads eight years old. When I mean, we're eight, nine, ten years old, I knew lads who were going to match on their own because there was a loads of them. You know what I mean? They they yeah, they yeah. be in the boys' pen, and then by the time you're eleven or twelve, you're going to match with all your mates because it's like forty pence to get in. It's yeah, it's yeah. not you know a two hundred pound day out for someone. It's funny. I was I was I've been seeing a mate of mine every week. We have a little have a little shit off in town and have a drink, and he's a match going Liverpool fan fanatic. Been going right. since he was a kid, and he was saying about the lads who he knows who go to the match, and and it, I wonder if this would apply to yourself as well, because for you to go to Leeds, it's not a, 
It's not like you're getting on the bus and going down the roads. You're in for a good few hundred euro, aren't you, with your max ticket yeah, yeah, and your, big all the rest of it and your flight. Your flight to hotel, yeah. Yeah, he was saying uh, he was saying there's all this lads who he, he goes to match with, he's going like I'm absolutely loaded because <laughs> I'm not going to game. <laughs> it's like pays off all my credit cards and he's saying like he thinks a lot of them won't go back. So that that's an interesting thing that that, that you're having heard people talking about. That right. like suddenly if you can't go, you realise on what an expensive habit this is. You know, yeah, it's more yeah, expensive yeah, than it's so. more exp- if you're going home and away, mate, it's more expensive than cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> It's an, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting point. It's an, I never really thought about it like that. Now, I, I haven't noticed a slight improvement in my own bank balance as well from not going over. Well, um, course, yeah. but, but I'll, I'll always find something else to spend it on. But, <laughs> no, same here. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, same yeah. here. I've, I've developed a shock and Adidas trainer habit. I've got gazelles in every colour. Yeah. Uh, stop. Yeah, I'm on that Amazon every day going to... What do I need? I'm going. Yeah. I'm putting stupid. I'm putting stupid things in that I'd, I'd never even. And the same. I think I bought about six or seven pair of trainers in, in the last six months. Like I swear I was a spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's like the, the 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 cost of football now. You know, going back to what you were just saying there and how much it costs yeah. you and and like if it beforehand before you had your lad going the game yeah there's you now your lad's going so there's extra cost. Uh, the ticket prices aren't going down. Adi, just you know, if you're them. lucky, they'll stay the same. But there's always a little nibble, and and for me now, we've got a a, a situation where the clubs, the the amount of money swilling around in the game, the clubs are getting ten million a game, whether there's anyone in the ground or not. And I've seen a table recently. There's about half a dozen clubs in the Premier League that could survive without any supporters in the ground. And we've got, you know, there's been some strange things with Liverpool Football Club recently. I mean, there was that walkout a couple of years ago. I don't know if you remember that against Southampton. About thirds of the ground walked out over them wanting to raise the price of the tickets. Oh, I remember and, that. Uh, yeah. I don't think the club want the likes of me going the game. They want the likes of you going the game because you're turning up there with your lads. So you're in the, there's a souvenir shop. Uh, you're in the grounds early. It's It's... You know, a can a can of coke for your lad. That's that's eight hundred percent profits on it. There's a there's a you know a couple of pasties and a pint. They they're making money hand over fist. They get nothing out of me. I don't go. <laughs> I don't have a bevy in the ground. I don't buy a cup of tea in the ground. I don't buy a program. I pay for the ticket and I go in and and I leave. And they 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 want the tourists in there now. They want the you know you. You know, previous, I think it was the Thomas Coop packages they were doing. You know, ridiculous amounts of money for football. And yeah. they've done it. I've just seen it, a situation this for the for next season. You know, you've got this situation. And I don't doubt it's any different at Leeds, although it, I, I, I think in, in more recent lean times, there hasn't been the demand, might not have been the demand for having a season ticket at Leeds. But there's people who've, you know, it, it, it's not a rumour, it's a fact that there's people who had season tickets at Anfield that the guys whose name on them are dead, you know, these <laughs> things get passed on. So about yeah, five yeah. years ago, they did a thing on your renewal form that said, is it your name that's on the ticket? If not, are you the person who's usually in possession of the ticket? So it was kind of like, um, right, right. a, 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 like a shrouded amnesty. So you could go, yeah, you, yeah, I've, I've got the ticket. And um, what they've introduced for this season, if you've got a season ticket, you can have, this is to stop people pass, selling them on to tourists. Right. You know, if, I've, if me and you were sitting next to the, uh, each other at the game, I can sell your ticket to 300 quid to somebody and, and I can get the ticket. As soon as we're sitting in the ground together, I get the ticket back off them. What yeah, they're doing yeah. now is they're giving every season ticket over as if if you're not going to use the ticket, you have to give five the names of five people who will use it in your place, oh, which is right, right. which is an an interesting. And I think the see I think the season tickets now have got photos on them. So you look at a situation on building sites now that you can't get onto a building site. They've got facial recognition and fingerprint scanners at on building sites. That's common to football. 
because yeah, they, they so. don't they don't want people making money out of them when they could be making it. And you know, if you, I think I'm sure there's somewhere in the terms and conditions of your season ticket that if you're found to be selling it to somebody else, they'll take it off you. You know, it's uh, it's it, it's like anything, man. How much is enough money? How much do you want? You know, yeah, the, yeah. You're an, you're an absolute, you're one of the biggest global sports brands in the world. You're making mm. absolute fortunes. The but TV if you, if you, right. If you, if, you, if you look at it as well, Dick, there could be a bloke from Dublin who has a season ticket for Anfield or Ellen's Road. He can't make it to every game, yeah. you know? So he, he'd probably make it to half the home games and the, the other half he'd be... He'd give it to a different mate almost every every game, depending on who they're playing and all. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know if they're the face... Well, no, the, you, you just said the t- exactly... The, I was just thinking, a mate of mine, he comes... Uh, he's, the, <clears throat> he's the chair of the Derry Liverpool Supporters Club. And they have, within the club, uh, about 12 tickets. So that they, they've all got different people's names on. But that's just now, that's just become a ball ache for them. Because, you know, whoever's got the ticket, I think the tickets sit with the club even, you know, and, and 12 of them come over. So at least every home game, there's 12 lads and, and it gets shared around and it gets eroded. So, and, and they're the guys they want there. They want tourists at Anfield. They don't. They don't want scousers in the ground. They do. They want the scousers there to make the noise, because the tourists yeah. don't know how to do it. And I, I have good to say, my mate who who, who have been having a bevy with over the lockdown, he hates them. He absolutely hate. I hate to be said. The club's not ours. And I said, what's well, on? That's what it is. That's where. That's where we're at with football. Where and you know coming. what? If we're having this conversation in 10 years' time, Tommy, and Leeds, Leeds by this time, by else has, has done a Ferguson at Leeds and you won a couple of Premier League titles, that's what you're going to get. And this is what this is what Everton are banking on. I mean, this is an interesting story about footy tourism. I went to... I was up in at Liverpool. My cousin works for Everton. And he got me a ticket for Everton Palace. Right. Garbage game. <laughs> Palace away from home, you know, they, they ain't setting any scenery on fire, are they? So, <laughs> as, as me and my cousin are going, he's a blue, and I'll, I'll go and watch the Toffees. I love going to watch football, I won't go watch anybody play. Yeah, yeah, same. And we jump, we jump in a taxi, and this guy, uh, this American guy, says, um, Are you going to the ground? Yeah, we are. Do you mind if we, me and me mate jump in? No sound. They're both Man United fans who'd flown in, one had flown from the east coast of America, one had flown okay. from the west coast, they'd landed in London on the Friday to try and get tickets for a 12.30 kickoff at Stamford Bridge for Man United away at Chelsea. Couldn't okay. get tickets for there, ended up going to the 4 o'clock or the 5 o'clock kickoff, which was Tottenham West Ham at the West Ham Stadium. Jumped okay. on a train the next morning, Came up to Liverpool to watch Everton versus Palace, got a train home and flew back. And it's like, all right, for a start, you've got to have some doll to be doing that. But yeah, like, time, yeah. this is this is the law of the Premier League, and we got you know we've we had more muted suggestions about this European Super League. I think the European Super League now benefits all those big European clubs who are looking at the Premier League, going, that's what we want. But they don't understand. There's no tribalism. You know, if Leeds are playing Barcelona and you beat them 4-0, who are you ringing up to go, ah, Muppets, you got mugged and all that? <laughs> That's what yeah, yeah, football yeah. Is, is, from a supporter's point of view, is enjoying the game, seeing your team win, and in third place, humiliating your opposition, humiliating your local rivals. And you don't can't yeah. have that with European football. And the Premier League as a marketable thing it's such an ama- massive global product, and I keep thinking it can't be get, can't become any more popular than this. But I can see in in the next the next forty bit, Amazon gonna Amazon are gonna smash it. Amazon are gonna have it, and you if you got your Amazon Prime, will, you can watch any game you like live. Yeah. And the, the thing is, with where, where Sky, you have to have the infrastructure of a satellite dish to bring it into your house. Everyone's everyone's using Amazon. How many people, you know, the only person who's not using Amazon is that nutter who lives in the cave, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and he's, yeah, he's yeah. only not using it because he hasn't got internet. 
And this where this Premier League is going to go and the money that's involved in it, I think it's really exciting compared to other leagues. You know, the, the rest of it's Europe. To, I, th- I don't think there's any league in Europe that goes beyond two teams that are going to win it. You know, it's either PSG, few, yeah. PSG or Lyon. You, you know, you look at the uh, La Liga, I think La Liga's just been over 100 years old. And in the 100 years of La Liga history, 67 times either Real Madrid or Barcelona have won it. What? That's not a competition, yeah, yeah. is it? It's like, like Celtic and Rangers, you know. Rangers fans going, going mad because they won the league. You've only won the league because your, oppos- the, the, your only opposition have been woeful. You know, that's... I mean, sorry if that upsets, <laughs> upsets Rangers fans or fans of Scottish football. That's a fact. The rest of yeah, it yeah. is rubbish. It's rubbish. You wouldn't watch it. You know, you, you'd watch the Championship. The Championship is a more competitive league. League One's a more competitive league than, than Scotland. Yeah. And, you know, I think we're into, it's sailing into some strange times with football and the VAR thing and how we react to that because... This season, all right, I I'll admit that I might have a little bit more interest in it if fans were in the ground and if Liverpool were in contention. But if this is what we're going to have with football, with this bullshit VAR decisions, because yeah. for, for me, mate, I said this at the start, if every major league in, in Europe has had match fiction allegations in the last 10 years and we would be very naive to think that that couldn't happen here. And you think, you know, it's one, it, it's what two guys in a room, 200 miles away from the game, got no idea of the temperature of the game and they're making decisions. You know, the referee yeah, is on yeah. the pitch. It's crazy. He, he can, it's crazy. He can see, he can see the, uh, you know, uh, the winger being, being uh, bullied a little bit by the fullback and he can get a grip of that. Football is not made to be made with decisions like that. And I said it at the start that it would be the ruination of football. And everyone who I said it to has said to me now, they've killed it. And, you know, mate, don't get me started. I think think if if so many fans feel the same way, you know, they've got got to review it unless they stand to benefit from something that we don't know about. I.e., what you're saying, they could could very easily be match-fixing. Going on there, like I, I looked at the. There's been so many bad decisions, and if they don't get rid of it, they, they've got to, they've got to at least change it dramatically. I'm all for the, the kind of tennis Hawkeye. Was the ball over the line? Great, yeah. that's brilliant. You know, um, like the Thierry Henry uh, handball against Ireland there a number of years ago. Did he handle it? Or he scored? Yeah, there's a handball. That those kind of decisions are grand. But you look even at Leeds and Man City last week, and probably probably got the a result of the century against them, playing against them with 10 men for, for over 45 minutes. But I look at that Cooper, I don't know if you've seen the, the, that red card, but Liam Cooper went in, he won the ball. And, you know, we all we all played football at, at different le- levels and whether it was just kicking around the park. If you go in for a slide tackle, momentum takes it through. Mm. Momentum takes it through. Now, you don't mean to, to get the player, but you went out to get the ball and gravity and momentum is going to take it through. He tipped off your man, Jesus, who had already spent about 10 minutes of the, of the first half rolling around the floor every time somebody looked at him. A couple of Man City players comes in, there's a bit of pushing going on because of that. Oh, hold on a minute, we have to go to VAR and check it out. The ref had already given him a yellow. He goes, he looks at the challenge. I'm looking at it going, I don't see anything really bad with that decision, with that, that challenge. Maybe, maybe a yellow card. Ref comes back, changes his mind, sends them off. Two minutes after we just scored against Man City in the Etihad Stadium. And you're going, that's just totally ruined this match now. They're, they're going to come out and hit us for about three or four in the second half. Now, luckily and thankfully, we didn't. And we, and we, we, we defended really well. And we, we ended up winning the game in, in stoppage time. So, uh, as, as I said to a few people already, the next time I thought somebody got murdered when Dallas put that ball through the keeper's legs. But uh, the, the two of us, myself and Zach, the two of us, ah! It was great now of the season so far. But the, the VAR, the whole VAR situation has been a farce and there's no other way of putting it. It's um it, it's taken away from so much of the enjoying most enjoying parts of football, like scoring the goal. Every time Leeds scoring, we had five consecutive goals ruled out by VAR at one stage of the season, uh, up on a couple of months ago. And it's got to the point now when Leeds score, I kinda I want to 
uh, uh, no. no, hold on, hold on. Oh, it was a goal. Great, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, and that's 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 the celebration now. It's taken that jumping up, jumping off of your chair, and and hugging and kissing each other, and then you turn around and and it's the, the ref's doing this. Yeah. Uh, hold on, hold on. Oh, the hair on his knee was offside. No goal. Mason, and, so for me, it's, I a agree. Lot, it's a lot. It's totally agree. It's totally a, agree. It's a load of bollocks. That that's what it is. It, this this little skinny line, it doesn't even look like it, it's it's straight half the time. Do you ever see it? Well, like, going it's, back, it's, if you talk about the lines on the lines on the pitch, and uh, for the start, betting in play should be abolished. The, the ties between gamble and a football are way way too close. So uh, the Merseyside derby at Goodison Park, it's two two. I can lump on grands at 85 minutes that the game's going to end the draw. So I can put that bet on. Jordan Henderson scores the goal and he draws the line across the pitch. And the gap at the end of the line between the 18-yard box at the far end of the box compared to this one, it's not even straight. And then you start looking at things like frame rate. So when you're watching at this, what's the, what's the frame rate of, of you're watching at? Because if it's 29 frames a second... That's you know when the ball when the ball turns into a melon, that's not accurate enough. You know at the speed that humans move, if if it's if you if you're gonna get it down to that, the game's gone. If you're drawing lines on the pitch, the game's gone. It's 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 over. And if that's what we're gonna have, do you know what man? I, I, I think I'll just go and watch amateur football instead. I, I don't want to see that. It, it's and it's exactly what you said. The people said to, you know. The people who are, who are not football fans who watch rugby and cricket and, and they go like, and tennis, and they go, oh, it works there. Yeah, because in cricket, you've got to find areas. It, it happens within 22 yards. In tennis, did it cross the line or it didn't, like the Hawkeye. Goal line technology, brilliant. Have it all day long. Rugby, yeah. was he out of play? Can we see it? Well, we got stuff in rugby. It's inconclusive, so what then? And, and I'll tell you, the, with, with the tweaking of the VAR rules, which is going to come in, is, and again, this goes back to the betting in football, is that uh, there's going to be defined periods of time for football, uh, for VAR decisions. So if there is a VAR decision, it's, going to, it, it's not going to be, we'll get over it when it's done. They're going to have defined periods of time, which means... All this money that we're paying for this football, we can now claw a little bit of it back with advertising. And you'll be going, you'll be sitting there while they go to VAR because someone's just been taken down on the edge of the box. And Cockney Day Winston's going to come up and go, was it a pen? Oh, 12 to 1 that it was a pen. It's, it's coming. It's coming. And then five years from now, it'll be a game of four quarters with even more advertising. It's just... It, it's the money, mate. The money kills and poisons everything. And, you know, I, I don't want to be like the guy who's going, oh, you know, the Corinthian spirit and amateurs and all that. Yeah, I can see you and you're recording. I think I think we got cut yeah. off by Bet three six five there, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> we must have hit an yeah. error somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? And then you just said it. Then you know, we're talking about gamble. I was talking about gambling and football, and you know the, the fingers in all the pies. And now you're going to ask me to predict the score. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention the show is sponsored by Paddy? But now, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, th I, I think uh, I'll be I'll be listening to the game on the radio because I'm travelling back to Liverpool on the train. Um, right. So I'll 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 probably be listening to it on the Rattler, and uh, I just hope it's I hope it's a good game. You know, to be honest, I, I think we've got to be in the to get in the Champions League is a big thing for the money, and. Uh, I'm hoping that that now that distraction has gone, that when we're not going to be in the champ, you know, our, our Champions League journey has ended for this season. I'm expecting us to win, but um, you know, 
you look at the, you, what, what, was the what, what was the score for the first game? Four three. Yeah. I mean, that was just it was just ridiculous. It was like uh, it was like park football. So I, I'll go I'll go for five four. Five <laughs> four. <laughs> To who? No, I'm joking. Either <laughs> way, either way. <laughs> either way. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah well, well, I suppose, it, from, it's from my point of view, it's this game, Le- Leeds have already been successful this season. Where we are in the league has already been, uh, we've already outdone ourselves. And I kind of look at this match as being a, probably a bigger match for Liverpool because you just need to get into those top four places. But yeah. uh, the, the, the optimist in me, <laughs> and after beating Man City uh, last weekend, I'm going to go for a very optimistic 2-1 to Leeds. I don't think that's optimistic, mate. I think that's that's, that's more than realistic. You, it's, uh, I say, it, I, I wouldn't put a bet on you. you. Look at the scores you've seen this season. You know, what was, the, what was Liverpool? 7-2. You know, it, it's... Uh, no, there was a nine 0 as well there. That's right, yeah, it's right, yeah. South, it was a Southampton got got done again nine 0 Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's uh, I don't know. I, I think um, if we don't get Champions League football, it's not going to be the end of the world. If we get Europa League football, I'd sack it off. Put the kids in there. I wouldn't be asked. And then that gives us that gives us thirty eight games to win the league, which our first eleven, I think, wins the league. I think our first eleven is better than City's, and you know they're lo- they're going to lose another another big character from their dressing room in Aguero, and also it's tough to defend the league. It's tough to win it two years on the sprint. Um, yeah. Did I think we were going to be as bad as we were? Of course it didn't, but it's um, it just got you know th- the difference to us winning the league was getting Virgil Van Dijk and getting Allison. And you put mm. two of them out of it. That's the reason you didn't win the league the years before because you didn't have them. But we'll see. I think uh, I- I'm fully expecting either Mane or Salah not to be with us next season, and we'll see how it goes. But I still think this is a blip. I think this season is a blip for everybody. Um, mm. It's been bad for us in terms of injuries, but next year we'll be up there. We'll, we'll be having it, so. and. The- the ground will be full, and, and you know, I think, um, I think I, I made up because uh, I know, I know, see, I know what a passionate fan you are of Leeds, man, and it, and it's, um, and I know that in your lifetime there's been some very, very slim pickings. So when that, when I see the likes of Leeds get promoted into the Premier League and all other clubs, you think, well, who do I know who supports them? And you think, yeah, that's bosh for them because they. Not so much like a bomb or someone like that, but for Leeds, it, it's it's kind of like back where they belong, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, could... I'm not I'm not blowing smoke up your ass when I say that. It, no, it, it no, is, no. They're, a, they're a big team and um, they've got passionate support, and yeah. and that's what we need. We need more than that. Hundred percent. We've had sixteen years of misery and crooks on in the club and shit players. Players are ne- players I never thought I'd see in a fucking Leeds jersey, but running out going, Gee, I might get my own boots back out. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tommy, you just you just give you just give yourself a great song title there. Sixteen years of misery. That's a that's a brilliant first line. There we go. It'll have to be a duet. <laughs> Come here, so, no, sure, I could talk to you all day, and I'm sure uh, when lockdown is over and you get yourself back over here, or if I'm over in Liverpool, we'll have to catch up and have a few few gargles together. Oh yes, mate. Well, look, if you're um, if you're over next season for uh, for Leeds and Anfield, I know it's it, it's it's a nice little jaunt for you there, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's a quick one and it's it's yeah, a reasonably yeah. cheap one. Yeah, give us a shout, mate. I'd love to take you around, take you a few few beers, but um. I think that may be more likely to happen than uh, me being over there because I don't, I can't see me getting over there th- at any time this year. Um, right. So I wanted, to, I wanted to do it in the summer, and the way the way things are, you can't really make any plans. But if I do, yeah. buddy, you'll be the first to know about it. I'll give you the shout. Yeah. Nice and enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the game on Monday. Yeah, you too. Listen, I'll give you, I'll give you a text after after the full time whistle, no matter which way it goes. Anyway, listen, thanks Watch for being on. on the pre match show and the Bielta Ball podcast. Have a great weekend and uh, enjoy the match on Monday, Nasha. Stay and safe. you too, buddy. All the best. Now, anytime, but anytime, man. Give us a shout. Take care, it's man. It's all good. Take it easy. Ta-da. See you later, mate. See ya.